Welcome back to Motor T Scale Models. This is John. I wanted to bring you up to date on the uh, 1969 Boss 302 Mustang. I have completed this uh, uh, kit. It has been a fantastic kit to build. Um, I mean, this everything went in perfect. Uh, there was no fitment issues that I had at all. Uh, you know, because of the kit, any issues that I had were, were self-inflicted wounds, no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, I would recommend this kit to, to anyone, and, and, and I plan on getting another one and maybe do something uh, again with it. Uh, really, really enjoyable kit. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Can't say that enough. Um, <clears throat> but uh, with that being said, uh, let's, let's kind of take a look at the uh, completion. Uh, but first off, uh, if you're new to my channel, hey guys, thanks for coming to watch my videos. If you uh, are returning to my channel, man, thanks very much for coming back. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button, uh, share the video, uh, hit the notification uh, so that you'll be notified for, of future builds. And then, uh, you know, if you, if you like it, subscribe to my channel. Um, I look forward to uh, uh, people uh, giving me, uh, uh, you know, input uh, in the comment section. Uh, you know, positive, negative, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I appreciate it all. Um, you know, anybody can give me tips uh, on this particular kit. And I think I mentioned in the last video, uh, I believe it was uh, Open Exhaust uh, got with me and said, hey, he had some issues with the uh, uh, decal for the dash kind of prepped me for that. When it came to that, I was ready for it. Uh, took my time, made sure I worked through it. Uh, didn't get frustrated because I anticipated it to happen. So shout out to, to, to Open Exhaust for that. Thanks a lot, man. Um, but uh, taking a look at the box art, man, this, this black and yellow really, really pops. I really enjoy that. Uh, however, I wanted to do something different on this kit. So uh, I did some research took a look at uh, what colors came out on the 1969 302 Boss Mustang. Uh, and one of the colors I found uh, was called a uh, Calypso Coral. Um, very few cars, I think, I think they said something like 143 cars actually came out, and I could be mistaken on that number, but I think they said 143 cars actually were painted in this color. So I thought, man, that is a good looking color. So I wanted to kind of reach out and see if I could find somebody that would uh, make or provided the uh, Calypso Coral. And I found a company, and the company is called True Colors. Um, this is their product. Uh, now, I'm pretty new to using uh, airbrush. Uh, I've only used the airbrush for the last couple of months. Um, and with that being said, um, I'm still learning how to do things, okay? So normally what I usually do when I'm doing uh, airbrushing is I add a little bit of airbrush uh, uh, flow, um, what's it called here? Uh, airbrush, airbrush flow improver. I usually add that to my paint just to make it kind of, kind of flow a little bit easier. Um, however, when I put airbrush flow improver in this paint, it became jello. Kid you not, it's, it became so clumped up, um, it took me a while to get my airbrush uh, cleaned out so that it would go again. Uh, the, the instruction says, use this straight from the bottle. Okay, use it straight from the bottle. And when I did, it, it, it I didn't add nothing to it. The paint flowed great, had no problem with it. Um, this was a reasonable priced little bottle. I think I paid $8 for uh, this. Um, some of the other colors are, are a little cheaper. Um, go to True Color. Uh, they've got a lot of different uh, uh, things that you can look at. Uh, really enjoyed the, the paint. So uh, I went with the, um, the Calypso Coral. That's the color I went with. So without uh, any more talking, let's take a look at the car itself. Okay, so this is my... 1969 Ford 302 Boss Mustang. All right. Uh, I love this color. 
this color turned out extremely well. I, I really enjoyed it. And like I said, any issues that I had was all self-inflicted wounds. They had nothing to do with, with the kit or the paint. It was all my, my issues. But let's talk about the, uh, the car itself. Man, this car went together fantastic. Now, before anybody says anything, after I, I kind of got finished up, this is a, a, a one piece right here. This color right here should be the body color. And unfortunately, I did not pay attention and I painted it black. So it's black. That's just the way that is. Uh, so if you guys say, hey, wait a minute, you, you, you screwed up there. Yeah, I did. But it's just going to have to work. The next one I'll do a little bit better on. Uh, so some of the other issues that I have with this with this kit is on this hood, uh, you have a two-piece uh, decal. And what you, my understanding is what you're supposed to do is you lay the decal down and then you paint on the inside of that decal black. So that's what I was doing. However, when I put my tape down, uh, I actually put the decal down, put a couple coats of uh, a, a top coat on it, and then I put my tape down. Well, this part of the decal came up. So you can see, maybe you can see right there, there's a piece of decal that's torn off. So I ended up having to just tape on the outside of the decal and painted everything uh, on the inside. Again, self-inflicted wound, nothing to do with the, the, the kit itself. That's me. But uh, I think the hood turned out pretty good. Um, <clears throat> I had originally talked about using uh, these um, uh, five-spoke wheels which I thought was gonna look really good. And I put them on the tires and put the car with it. And it, it didn't look too bad, but when I actually got out the original um, uh, wheels for this, for this vehicle that came with it, and man, it just, it just looked too good. So I, I just wanted to go with that, painted the inside of those black, and they really, really looked sharp, okay? Um, so the decals, this piece right here is a one-piece decal, if you can see that. So that's not a big deal, but right here, these are very thin, so you really need to take your time if you're going to um, uh, put this decal on. You gotta really kind of slow down, take your time. Uh, but I mean, the decal went down like a champ, worked out great. Um, so uh, that worked out really, really well. Um, one of the issues that, that I did have with this, with this kit, again, self-inflicted wound, I tried using bare metal foil on um, the trim. Now on the back trim, the bare metal foil went down perfect. No issues at all on the back uh, trim. The door, the side trim, everything went down very well, no problems. But when I came to the front and I started putting bare metal foil down, for whatever reason, it just absolutely would not adhere to the uh, vehicle. Um, and I kept trying, I kept trying. The more I handled the car, the more I handled the car, uh, I ended up messing up the the uh, bare metal foil on the back window and I messed up the bare metal foil on the side. So I took all the bare metal foil off, laid down my tape, and then I used the, uh, uh, what's it called here? The... Um, Gundam marker, Gundam marker, poly, uh, the uh, chrome, liquid chrome. This is white. Sorry. This one right here. So I used the liquid chrome, uh, and I did get a little bit outside. The paint, the tape didn't quite fit down that well, but that's okay. Um, with that Calypso paint, I was able to go in there and just do a little bit of touch up and it laid down pretty good with no flaws at all. So um, uh, I gotta figure out a better way of doing that. I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it, but anyway, uh, I did use bare metal foil on this post right here and the door uh, handles are bare, bare metal foil. Um, same thing on this side. This decal went down without a flaw, no issues at all. Um, Extremely happy with that. Uh, did get some type of, and you can see it in the video, some type of little something there. I don't know what that was. Um, the actual um, decal, the Mustang decal, man, it laid down great, no problem. 
Um, so um, I did order aftermarket hood pins. Um, they worked out really good. First time using those. Excuse me, it worked out real well. Uh, now, so for future, if you have not built this model yet, uh, something to kind of keep in mind, on this model's hood, the actual hood, the actual hood pins have little tabs right here. And what way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to work it in. So both of them have, met, have these little plastic tabs. But when I was putting the hood in and out, it kept scratching the paint because you had to work it in and out kind of in that fashion. So the way I fixed that is I just trimmed, I just trimmed this tab right here off and I kept this one over here. So now when I go to put the hood on, I just work it in on one side, the other side slides right in and it does not damage the paint at all, okay? Um, one other thing, if you look, if you look on the hood, man, I got some, I got some trash in my paint. And I, I've done that before, and I kept thinking, what in the world um, is going on? Why, you know, I blow the, blow the model off, everything like that, uh, before I start painting. So I noticed that I had dust in my, my paint booth. Um, shame on me, again, self-inflicted wounds. So what I've decided to do from this point forward is I have an old T-shirt. Uh, I will clean out my paint booth. I'll wash out my paint booth. Uh, wipe it out, and then I'm gonna lay that T-shirt down on the inside, and hopefully that'll kind of kind of cure that. If you guys have any other suggestions other than just not being lazy and, and not cleaning out my booth, I would appreciate it. So let's take a look at the motor. Uh, man, this this is a 302 Boss motor, and it it laid down. I mean, it it went in there just almost perfect. Um, did go with the plug wires. Uh, everything kind of fit really good in there. Um, no issues on that uh, it does this kit does come with two motors um, I use one of them I'll take the other one and I'll probably build it maybe use it in another model or I may just kind of use it as a as a display or something I'm not for sure um, very few parts were left over on this kit uh, you you do use pretty much all that you have um, <clears throat> so uh, the one thing that I did do, I saw some people that were doing, and I wish I, I wish I didn't have to say this, but I've never thought about it, was I actually put the mirrors on this kit before I painted it, and man, that, is, that, was, that was genius. I, and some of you go, oh yeah, I've been doing that for years. I understand that, but I never thought of it. I saw it on a couple of you guys doing it, and I thought I'd try it, and it worked out flawless. Now, I know people talk about pinning the mirrors and pinning like maybe the uh, the air spoiler that's something I may do in the future um, it seems like it makes it real real easy to do um, what else on this kit okay so let's take a look at the underneath everything laid down really really well underneath uh, this this muffler system man it fit under there perfect uh, one of the few kits I've had where I had no issues at all with the um, the uh, the muffler kit uh, the the actual frame fit inside the body beautifully uh, no fighting it nothing it just went right in there again guys I can't praise this kit enough it was really a good kit to do now one of the things that I did and I'll tell you about another little flub up and I don't know if you guys would be able to see it or not but right in here there is a um, a little line and what that line is, is I use Future Floor Restore as a top coat on my models. And it, it works pretty good because, this, in my opinion, the 70s, uh, the 60s, 70s, they didn't really have a really high gloss coat on them. Uh, you know, you got the car kind of the way it was. You could wax it up. But, you know, to me, I think this is kind of a true uh, resemblance of the way the cars were. Uh, but normally what I do when I spray that top coat on it, with that future is I let the future get just a little bit tacky and then I hit it again and I usually do four to six coats uh, depending um, but on this one I was laying down uh, the third coat got busy doing something else came back not paying attention and laid down the fourth coat 
But what I wasn't paying attention about was that third coat had dried. So when I laid down the fourth coat, it began to run just a little bit. I had some puddle issues right here. I was able to get that cleaned up where it didn't really show any, any major problems. But um, uh, it did cause that little line. I was able to get a big part of it out, not too much. Uh, shows up, but I, I do notice it. So, um, something to think about. Uh, what else? Um, I love the color. My, uh, my thought is, is that that is a beautiful, beautiful color. Uh, I think the model turned out really good, and I really appreciate all the support that everyone has been giving me on, uh, my channel and my, my builds. Uh, man, I, you know, when you build models, people don't normally see it, but your family, a few friends that come over, but but getting on YouTube with all you guys that build models too, man, I learned so much. I get to see, I'm, I'm inspired by all the great work that everybody does, and I want to tell you how much I appreciate you. Uh, with that being said, there is my version of the 1969 uh, Boss 302 Mustang. Um, I think it turned out really well. And uh, give me your comments. Let me know what you think. And other than that, guys, we will see you on the next video. Not sure what I'm going to do on the next video. I've got a military Jeep model coming in, a 1983 um, M151A2. I may work on that and kind of get away from cars for a little bit, or I may just go back to working on cars. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much. Again, if you're new to my channel, thanks for coming. If, you're, if you've been here before, thanks for coming back. And... Uh, God bless everyone, and keep modeling. Simplify.